maestro pa yun. Ah, di ba? Double ni siya, double. Double, uh, doctorate na ni siya. Ha? Doctor of Education, Doctor of Humanities, mga gigsunan. Number, science, sa baluta, si Dr. Carl Balita. Hello, hi. Magandang panghalian. Uh, I'm Carl Balita. Uh, I'm not new to Cagendi Oro. In fact, uh, I operate a review center here in Cagendi Oro in Moho. I have built up some of the biggest venues here for teachers, review, for nurses. I have produced several top matchers. In fact, we probably have covered the number two of Opol Community College. He is actually the product, si Bernie. Um, you probably also know me as, uh, as a radio and television personality as well from ABS-CBN, where I spent 20 years of my life as host of the program Radio Negosyo. Uh, over ABS-CBN and DCMM, which I gave up the moment I filed my certificate of candidacy. Um, why did I join the race? Uh, first, it's because of the request of the health sector. I hold two professional licenses as a health professional, and the uh, doctor leaders, the hospital leaders, thought that uh, uh, you know, I could win, considering to represent health considering that I have other sectors as well. Um, I, I initially, I was reluctant. I rejected the offer until Dr. Willie Ong, whom I have supported in uh, during his editorial run. Actually, I brought Dr. Willie here one time, and I, it was in a venue called Hills Capital University. I filled that gym up for Dr. Willie. And then Dr. Willie called me, and later on, Jorby called me already and offered me to run a senator under his leg which I couldn't refuse anymore. And by God's grace, my family allowed me to run. Um, I'm the only licensed teacher running. My doctorate degrees are in education and humanities, which is why my platform carries Kalusugan, Karunungan, which is education and Kabuhayan. Masyado po maraming issues ngayon, not only in health, but also in education. And maybe during the interaction later, you can, you can talk about it. But the third K in my platform is Kabuhayan because I have championed the cause of the micro, small, and medium enterprises uh, for 20 years of my life, being one of them. Because I also started my review center through a small table that started in Moraita, and I was successful in bringing it in 120 cities all over the country. I have reached a million Filipinos, young Filipinos, to become professionals for the Philippines and the world. So, given that, I would like to embrace uh, entrepreneurship and uh, promote it, uh, not only uh, in the mass media or in the advocacies, but in policies, special education policies. I can lengthily talk about agriculture and agripreneurship, among others. I was very happy this morning to see that Himo has, uh, is producing ulong tea already and wants to position itself as the tea capital. I was talking with uh, the mayor and he was so excited talking about some products that he would like to bring out to the market uh, and for which we became very interested to connect with each other uh, towards entrepreneurship. I think really it's the way to go. Uh, again, the order being the city of Golden Friendship and uh, being uh, MICE, I think it's the MICE capital of, of Mindanao. No? The tourism you have here is on meetings, incentives, conferences, and events. I think it's about time that we prime up the entrepreneurial spirit of uh, especially the young people. So I understand, I'm, I'm sitting in front of you now as a, a technocrat in the areas of education, in the areas of uh, enterprise development, and of course in the areas of health. Uh, not being a politician uh, for it, but uh, being professionals for it. So it was uh, I mean, we could still recall the days that we had uh, Dr. Juan Javier in the Senate, a health professional there. Yeah, and we would also still remember Senator Raul Rocco, uh, who was uh, you know, a teacher as well. Uh, going to the Senate, that's, these are the footsteps I want to follow to make sure that we're ready for the post-pandemic era where health, education, and uh, livelihood development or entrepreneurship could, could prosper. Thank you very much. We're ready for your questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Number one in the Balota, I'm going to talk to Carl Balita. Educator name. So, I'm going to talk to him. 
nga information. Okay, yung nanay mo nga himona, one question, kung mahimo, okay na ganit, hindi na tamo panuha para nga tuyok na tutanan. Okay na? Okay, o. Una nga pangutana, Sheryl Makali, saya hang uh, pangutana, tapos sunod na yun si Jan Paul, na tamo na pa taas, sunod na yun si, okay, si uh, John Michael. Sunod na yun si Amor Barsidia. Okay, o, kumatupat. Sunod na. Ay, sorry. Si Amor Bibi, na kung narito. Okay, kumatupat. Good afternoon to all our senatorial goals, some of um, both, uh, both senatorial goals that are here. I don't know personally, uh, um, Ma'am Samira, and of course, uh, Sir John, Secretary of DAR. But sir, um, my main question right now, I have a million questions to really be identified, but only one question is allowed. So. <laughs> about uh, the freezing of the excise tax which could probably uh, or most likely help our economy now uh, with our, our position with the oil price hike now it has been affected the economy so badly that uh, a lot of us are suffering in fact uh, is there any any motion uh, for you to uh, in the near future if, if, if in case uh, that this happens again uh, are you in favor of the freezing of the excise tax for us to be able to breathe uh, with the economy lost right now. Thank you, Ma'am Sir. As a crisis leader, definitely any any relief, Ma'am, any kind of uh, relief from uh, the impositions of our government is a welcome development. And we echo this cause very brave stand to cut by 50% the taxes on crude and electricity. And so being the home of hydroelectric power in Lanao, that would that would give so much relief to so many of our tricycle drivers, our vendors, our small and medium, which is the dominant under which is the dominant economy. And Mindanao po, ang mas marami ekonomiya, informal economy, which is also what's in Manila. Eh. So malaking bagay po yung gasolina talaga yung crudo, eh mabawasan ng tax. So yes ma'am, um, I would defer also to Sir John if you have any well, in response to your uh, question, when we cut the excise tax, that's okay. I think that's one way of trying to address the concern uh, within which we would be able to give, uh, to alleviate the suffering of our ordinary people. But you know, that, that's just a very knee-jerk position or a very temporary solution to the problem. Because what we need right now is a long-term solution to all these problems. If you are aware, we have the anti-regulation law, wherein the government cannot interfere when it comes to the setting of prices of oil. And I think that is the primary uh, hindrance with which we are able to address this concern. And I think that if we are, if I personally would become a senator, I would see to it that I would have to amend this anti-regulation law because you know, uh, we have to be aware of the very nature of our world today. We remember we are exposed to a lot of uh, of uncertainties. Like for example, the Russia-Ukraine war. That is uh, something that we should be uh, be wary about because it might complicate and it might uh, create a lot of problems that would have to redound to the suffering of a lot of people. Uh, we are not affected directly in the sense that we are not buying any petroleum or coal uh, from Russia and Ukraine. But the fact is, there are a lot of countries with whom we are transacting with that uh, supply us with a lot of imported products. And the aftermath of that is that, of course, it can affect us indirectly. So I think it's high time that because of the so many uncertainties of the world, we should be able to amend the anti-deregulation law so that the government would have the say when it comes to the pricing of crude oil and petroleum which is very necessary. Uh, as we all know, you know, <clears throat> we are a country that depends so much on dollars. We cannot consult in the world using our peso. We only use dollars. And you know, because of this, we have to choose the countries with whom we consult with. And that's the reason why it is very necessary for us to come up with laws that would have to attend to the needs of our people. And one of which, of course, is by trying to amend the anti-regulation law. And in connection with that, I think it's also high time that we should try to amend the rice clarification law because a lot of people are definitely affected because of this. Uh, there are a lot of, may I continue? 
Okay. Okay, yes. There are a lot of, uh, well, the, the purpose of the rice sanitation law, which I think is our main concern, is that we would like to see to it that we have a steady flow of supply of rice in our country. But the problem is, it's not any public and hurry that can bring in the rice in our country, only the rich people who are actually gaining and taking advantage of this law. And because of this, we are flooded with a lot of rice, of which the cost of production of it is really very low. That when it competes with our local production, we are at a loss. We don't know what's happening right now. A lot of our farmers are already uh, so much uh, frustrated that they don't even want to plant palay anymore. <laughs> so basically, these are all interrelated with each other. And that's the reason why I think it's high time that we should select senators to, 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 that are really capable and more knowledgeable when it comes to these kinds of things. Because if we keep on voting senators who have been there for the longest time and whose policies and whose mindset are always the same, then we will always be having the same kind of situation and problems. So I hope that we have to Another follow up, uh, uh, sir, uh, follow -up answer, uh, Dr. Mar, Alina. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to raise two points. Point number one, yung, uh, lifting or suspension of the excise tax will probably be 5 pesos to 10 pesos. Yes. Direct. Um, as you may see, this will affect everyone. Pero na nga kailangan talaga yung mahirap. Kung gusto talaga natin tulungan yung mahirap, subsidy is the, the shortest way to yes. it. And such subsidy which they have started at 200 and the president uh, re uh, requested to be 500, if this will be given to them, it would somehow, somehow, Maliit pero pwede na makatulong. Pero you would also even see the news that the transport sector, especially the PEDUDAP, requested for a one peso increase fare in Manila, for example, uh, from the news there, one pesos uh, instead of the 15 na hinihingi ng iba, but they, will, they were not allowed. So talagang biiyak ang transport sector, specifically the PEDUDAP. Because kung one peso na hinihingi nila, hindi naman lagdag, kung hindi yung supposed to be approved na before, na hindi na nila on some renewable and alternative sources of energy. This is where we have to think seriously that we should not give too much premium on, on the fossil fuel and rather explore other alternatives like uh, the other ones. And uh, this is where the enterprise could be incentivized for such use. Kasi alam nyo, pagbilban na natin yung size tax, yung mayaman, kokoche pa rin, gear conditioning pa rin, etc. Pero kung gusto natin talaga tulungan yung maliliit, I think subsidy should come. Um, but alam naman yung pinatasagot. The si president, si our candidate for president, declared five months ago that he would cut the uh, tax on uh, oil and tax on electricity by 50%. This was five months ago to, to alleviate the plight of our countrymen because of the pandemic. But that is a measure that we can adopt, especially now because of the outbreak of the uh, of the, uh, the war and the possible effects of, of this on our on our economy and the transport sector. So, um, part of the powers of the legislative legislative department is to even increase if if uh, fifty percent is not enough. Then we can go one hundred percent. It would have an effect of uh, reducing uh, the price by eight to 10 to 12 pesos, and I, th I think that would be a uh, welcome development for the transport sector. So yes, we are we are amenable to removing the excise tax even up to 100%, uh, and we, we, we even can explore the possibility of uh, uh, delegating this to the Department of Energy if we are able to predict that this crisis in oil would uh, last for quite some time. Yes, uh, an another follow-up okay. question uh, uh, to all our senatorials. Uh, no one is prepared for this. Uh, everybody is, our country is very dependent on the world market in terms of the oil. And so, uh, uh, since time in oil, we, we never have thought about importing our oils, which is, Malaysia is just right there, around the corner, very close to us. And it is a wild idea, but uh, would you agree in the near future if you were elected as, as a sen senator that we would have our own oil bank in every region so that we would have a subsidy uh, uh, in case if this, this happens with the world market affecting our, our whole economy? 
Yeah, for now, I would uh, favor what uh, Carl said, exploring alternative uh, sources of energy. If that is not enough, then yeah, I, I'm uh, amenable to seeking uh, a more uh, collaborative uh, arrangement with our neighbor. Right, thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. In the 10-point economic agenda we spoke, launched uh, February in the headquarters in Intramuros, there was a strong point on uh, R&D, research and development. May I raise to the floor uh, Likwasan Marsh and other sources of energy in the Mindanao areas. We truly are gifted, but R&D and the institutes and the universities and the scientists towards this must be supported. Uh, I was sitting in the Mindanao State University as a regent and I was proposing for financial incentives for researchers so that they will publish their material worldwide on online journals. Mm -hmm. So when you publish it, ma'am, my 5,000 cash reward um, is some writer faculty member. So that, that is at least the educational input natin for R&D, for oil and for other alternative fuels. Uh, sources to be explored in Mindanao. Okay, John Paul, what's up yet? Yeah, good day. Ah, sorry. So, napaya ka na dada na sa note. For a while. Just two small points. Sabi na mentioned about the science and technology budget. I'd like to tell you that we have one of the lowest R&D budget in Asia. And our, we're lacking scientists, engineers, um, and inventors, actually, and that's an official statement by the DOST, which is sad. We have to strengthen our STEM education. You know, the beauty, by the way, for the appreciation of our press, the beauty of our slaves is that we are experts in different lines. We're so diverse, but we can align. Especially, like, this is even a topic on which, which you asked about energy, and now I'm talking about, as an educator, we have to strengthen our STEM education. In fact, if we strengthen our STEM education and we make STEM STEAM with A added to it, which is agriculture. Uh, this is uh, another long topic that you may want to, to ask later. But what I want to say is uh, we cannot just rely on important technology. We have to uh, develop our own science and technology for it. Uh, there are three laws that are propelling our economy um, recently passed, but we have to remember that these are just necessary enablers, but it may not be sufficient. We have to build our infrastructure, and more importantly, we have to build our human resource. And that would come from the education sector, which I would like to represent very strongly. We just cannot make motherhood statements and you know, have wishful thinking of developing our own. When you know when our own STEM education and the basic education are, are need, need a lot of help, and our own DOSD needs a lot of help. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. 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 Th